The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. It's Tuesday, so that means all the rankings in the world are now available in Division I Wrestling. Flow Wrestling, Track Wrestling, AWN, Win, The Open Mat, Intermat, The Society for the Reintroduction of Feral Cats, and Nipsey Russell's House of Hustle have all released their college rankings. They come out Monday or Tuesday, so you know where to go for them. And I won't bog you down here on the show or in the notes or in the newsletter about where you can find them. I will say I do despise tournament rankings being used for dual meet promotion. You wrestle duels, use a dual meet ranking. Several of them are out there. Pick one. Starting off the show with a rant rather than a rub, this is Short Time Shots, a mostly daily look at the scores and more from around the world of wrestling. I'm Jason Bryant. It's a limited night in duels, so we'll just throw out what we've got before it gets too late and my kids wake back up. My wife's still in China, which means I'm in survival mode. I love my kids. But you really do lose all sense of personal time when you're watching them by yourself. Tonight, it was The Little Mermaid Live. Under the sea, take it from me, there's some messed up lyrics in Disney films. So, I don't really have a set plan in mind with this next segment. I call it the Minnesota Beer of the Night. As you know, the NCAA Division I Championships are coming to Minneapolis this year, this season. So with that in mind, when relevant, I'll give you my Minnesota beer of the night. Tonight, it's Pixelbot, a New England IPA that's 7.6% ABV, but a smooth 11 IBUs. If you don't know what that means, it means it's not bitter and it has a bit of a kick. By Tin Whiskers Brewing Company in St. Paul, that's one we're checking out. Now in dual meets, it was a men's women's Division III doubleheader in Naperville, Illinois on Tuesday night as North Central College picked up a pair of wins over McMurray College. On the women's side, the Cardinals won the first dual meet in school history in women's wrestling with a 27-21 win. Of the seven matches contested, North Central won six of them. On the men's side, North Central used four forfeits to win comfortably 47-6. In Little Rock, Division II Wachita Baptist won a pair of duels, first topping host Arkansas Baptist in NJCAA School 40-6 and then beating NAIA Central Baptist 37-16. No, let's flip that. That's 36-17. Yeah, transposition error, line one. Arkansas Baptist upended Central Baptist 24-14. That's it. That's all you got. That is the extent of Tuesday's scores. Promo code warning. I posted on Twitter today about the number of wrestling podcasts currently out in the wild. There's about 63 active shows, with 20 of them here on this Matt Talk Podcast Network. I want people making good decisions when it comes to choosing a podcast hosting company. There's stuff that's free, and then there's stuff that's good. I want you to go with what's good. Sign up for Libsyn at L-I-B-S-Y-N, that's at Libsyn.com, and use the promo code MTO to get a month for free. That means you get the rest of this month and next month for free. They've got plans as affordable as $5 a month. I suggest when you're starting out, you look at that $5 plus the stats, that's 7 bucks. It is quality, quality stuff. They have been the backbone of this network. If you don't reach out for me for technical advice, at least hear me out on this one. Libsyn.com, use the promo code MTO and get your first month and maybe more for free. Now, the top 10 or so from the DWN. I'm trying to make that rhyme. Top 10 from the DWN. Yeah, you hear the drummer get wicked. Not going to work. Top 10 from the Daily Wrestling Newsletter. Of course, we saw the first NWCA Division I coaches poll. The regular season released on Tuesday with the only real movement happening as a result of Virginia Tech's 29-10 win over Missouri. The Hokies jumped up five spots to number 11, while Missouri slid four spots from number 9 to number 13. The NJCAA rankings came out, and Western Wyoming comes in as the number one team to start the year. The Mustangs are followed by Nyack, that's North Iowa Area Community College, Clackamas, Harper, and Ellsworth. Expect traditional powers Northeastern Oklahoma A&M and Iowa Central to creep up there as the season moves on. Still some more wrestlers of the week trotting out as Johnson and Wales swept the New England Wrestling Association Awards this week as Gabriel McDonald was named the wrestler of the week while Hayden Brown was rookie of the week. Both won titles at the Ithaca Invitational. McDaniel at 141, Brown at 133. McDaniel was also named the D3Wrestle.com Wrestler of the Week. Yep, Andy Vogel getting a shout-out for D3Wrestle.com. The Air Force Academy's Randy Menaweather was named the co-Big 12 Wrestler of the Week after winning the Cowboy Open and going 5-0 with four falls at 165 in the Elite Division. He shares the award with Fresno State's Jacob Wright, who went 3-0 in duels in San Diego, which is Spanish for, you, you know, never mind. Virginia Tech's BC I'm Seriously Named After a Headache Powder La Prad was named ACC Wrestler of the Week. 
He wrestled in New Kent High School in Virginia, which is my home district, the Bay Rivers. Old group AA before Virginia screwed it up with his 6, 7, 8, 9, 15 class system. One time I was walking into a duel at Tab High School a few days before the Virginia duels. Tab is in the same district. It's about five minutes from where I grew up. BC's dad is in line behind me. He goes, hey, didn't I meet you in Fargo? I said, sir, you have to be more specific. He says, it was at the turf. I said, sir, you have to be more specific. Turf reference number two this year. Ohio State's Luke Pletcher and Purdue's Kendall Coleman were Big Ten co-wrestlers of the week. Both won the Michigan State Open. Pletcher's title. Let's try that again. pa 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 Plosives on the microphone. Bad podcasting with Plosive and Luke Pletcher. Wow, yeah, SM7B isn't going to fix that one. Pletcher's title included a win over number one Dom Demas of Oklahoma, while Coleman slayed three ranked foes en route to the title. The predicament released inside the rivalry, Chapter 7, Part 3. Sounds like a Bible verse a little bit. And, and, and now we turn to Inside the Rivalry 7-3. Uh, that's never to be confused with Leonard Part 6, although I don't think we can make references to films like that anymore. And if you know what Leonard Part 6 is, you know why we can't say it anymore. Anyway, this feature focuses on Mario Galanakis. It's been a pretty good series to read so far. IARussell.com has broken down the individual schedule for two-time NCAA champion Spencer Lee. I mean, this might be the first time in history I've seen something like this. Like, hey, here's your individual schedule. Keeping with that Iowa theme, Cody Goodwin of the Des Moines Register checks in with his Week 1 redshirt report. Cody won last year's NWMA Journalist of the Year Award, and I still have to send him his mug. North Carolina made a coaching move, adding Jordan Oliver to the staff as a volunteer assistant and also elevating Tony Ramos to associate head coach. Oliver's move to Chapel Hill was confirmed a bit ago, but him joining the staff officially is news to some. Transition Wrestling, an outfit aimed at promoting women's college wrestling, released its weekend recap. I'll be leaning more on what Gabby Lord Klein is doing with transition wrestling to keep up with the women's scores since I won't personally be tracking them down for my now retired college wrestling school board. Of note there, Texas Wesleyan earned its first ever women's college dual win, defeating Shriner 24 to 14. I'll do a better job at getting those women's scores in the shot score section as the season moves on. The Times of India, oh boy, if you don't know about Indian wrestling media, oh my goodness. Just Oh, this is like if you don't subscribe to the newsletter, sign up. And if you see anything from India, just follow it, because the stuff that comes out of that country with its wrestling news and it's it's like almost soap opera esque coverage. It's nuts. There's some really good writers. And then there's some writers that are like, I swear they went to the National Enquirer or Weekly World News School of Faux Journalism. Anyway. They do produce some pretty good stories out there. The Times of India is actually a legitimate wrestling coverage sports type of thing. They actually do a fairly decent job, although there is a little bit of the, uh, you know, the the posturing for the the Sushil Kumars of the world. Anyway, they feature 2020 Metal Hopes Vinesh Fogat and Bajrang Punia. The story goes into the backstory of the Fogats, which was highlighted in that movie Dongle, which is actually a really good movie. Five-point move this week outlines the rise of Spencer Wood of the Army's world-class athlete program as he won his first senior-level gold medal in Greco-Roman in Sweden over the weekend. This is something I thought I'd never say on this show. Yahoo reports Dwayne The Rock Johnson, hear me out here, will portray Mark Kerr in an upcoming film. Kerr, known widely as a pioneer in MMA, was a four-time NCAA qualifier at Syracuse and a 1992 NCAA champion. HBO did a documentary on Kerr in 2002 called The Smashing Machine. Kerr was 10th at the 1994 World Championships at 100 kilos in Istanbul in men's freestyle. Flo also touched on Willie Sato leaving the company. It's on the FRL podcast feed, which is free. However, the link to the show is part of Flo Pro now. And as I said in a previous show, the show in the newsletter does not link to content behind paywalls. I'm an equal opportunity denier as well. On this network, however, episode 55 of the Pack Mentality Poppins podcast, the only school-hosted team show on the Matt Talk podcast network, gets an NC State recap, as well as some insight from Kellen Devlin, who won the Battle of the Citadel. Let's battle at the Citadel, and the and the both capitalized. Yeah, he won that over the weekend at 133. You can get to read those stories and more from Matt Talk Online's daily wrestling newsletter. Sign up for free at matttalkonline.com and get the day's top stories from around the world, like the Times of India, in your wrestling inbox every single morning for free. On the docket, that's on the schedule. Yes, we have wrestling coming up on November 6th. West Virginia Tech from the NAI will take on Division II West Liberty as the Danny Irwin era begins at West Liberty. Tangent warning. Hopefully the kids who got left stranded by whatever the hell Wheeling University, formerly Wheeling Jesuit, 
all found homes to compete this year. Irwin led Wheeling Jesuit to a second-place finish at last year's Division II championships before the wheels on the bus came falling off, falling off, falling off, and the school slashed tons of academic and athletic programs but never officially announced it. The wrestling room is left in literal shambles. Sean Doyle and Danny Irwin and the staff there had a good thing going. There's something to be said about poor leadership at a school. And I'm going to CC that to our friends down at St. Olaf. Yeah. Yeah. Bon Bon, a new Division Three program in Missouri, will wrestle its first duel in school history as it heads north to Lincoln, Nebraska to take on Nebraska Wesleyan. Division Two Davenport heads across Michigan to take on Division Three Alma. Go Scots. Go Panthers. Both uh, relatively new reinstated programs. Graceland, the alma mater of the former Bruce Jenner. Yes, true story. Takes on Central Methodist in the NAI school's first duel in school history. While down in North Carolina, the Nick Soto era begins at St. Andrews as the NAIA Knights head to Belmont Abbey to take on the Division II Crusaders. Hold your religious jokes till the end, please. In California, three duels out west as Chabot hosts Fresno City, Cerritos hosts Palomar, and Santa Ana will host Rio Hondo. Rio Hondo is one of the two schools named Roadrunners that I know of in college wrestling. The other is CSU Bakersfield. Meep, meep. I'd love to do more with the NJCAA, but the schedule compilation there is just absolutely too brutal. The Matt Talk Online Daily Newsletter is sponsored by Resolite. Short time, doesn't have a sponsor. You want to contribute? You got a product or something you want some added exposure for? Give me a shout, Jason at BryantWrestling.com. Or if you'd like to support the show and all of the on demand audio offerings, free newsletters, and historical research, you can get some of that cool compound gear too. You can support this program by making a small monthly contribution or a one time. Oh, thank you very much by going to MattTalkOnline.com. Join the team. You can do that by using Patreon, by PayPal. You can send me something on Venmo. I've even got BuyMeACoffee.com slash MattTalk. Yep, buy me a coffee. You can do it once a month or you can do it just once. Those are the ways to support the program. MattTalkOnline.com slash join the team. And as always, the Short Time Wrestling Podcast is proudly outfitted by Compound Sportswear. I'm wearing one of my fly, oh, yeah, let's, you know what, I need to just never talk like that again. I'm 40. I'm wearing one of my Mad Talk hats now. Cliff Fretwell, yep, he is the man at Compound Sportswear, cmpteamwear.com. Check them out. They give me my gear, and uh, they do a really good job. And Cliff, man, he's always one to tell you. In the finals, my weather tweets are back. Find some time to tell your friends about this wonderful program. That's all I got for now. So again, I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me because you've always got time for short time.